Would everyone please stand? I am the resurrection and the life, saith the Lord. He that believes in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever lives and believes in me shall never die. I know that my Redeemer lives, and that he shall stand upon the earth in the latter day. And after the skin worms destroy this flesh, yet in my body shall I see God, whom I shall see for myself. My eyes shall behold, and not another. We brought nothing into this world. It is certain we can carry nothing away. The Lord gave, and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. We are here this morning to celebrate the life of Sister Herschella Horton. We'd ask at this time, you may be seated, I apologize. We'd ask at this time, if you do have a cell phone, that you would place it on silent or turn it off for the duration of the service. Amen. We're going to follow our program as printed. We have a selection, Amazing Grace, and then we'll have our scripture reading, our Old Testament scripture by Reverend Ruby Phelps, and our New Testament scripture by the Reverend Ben Davis.
God. Praise and grace, God. We thank you. I will be reading from the Old Testament, Psalm 23, from the New Living Translation. The Lord is my shepherd. I have all that I need. He lets me rest in green meadows. He leads me beside peaceful streams. He renews my strength. He guides me along the right path, bringing honor to his name. Even when I walk through the darkest valley, I will not be afraid, for you are close beside me. Your rod and your staff protect and comfort me. You prepare a feast for me in the presence of my enemy. You honor me by anointing my head with oil. My cup overflows with blessing. Surely your goodness and unfailing love will pursue me all the days of my life. And I will live in the house of the Lord forever. May blessings fall on all that heard this word of God. Amen. I will be reading from the gospel according to John, third chapter, the 16th through the 20th verse. <clears throat> For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believed in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He who believes in him is not condemned, but he who does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation that the light has come into the world and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For everyone practicing evil hates the light and does not come to the light, lest his deeds should be exposed. May the Lord add a blessing to every home that's represented today and everyone as well in this church. Amen. Praise God to Pastor Scott to the family of Priscilla Horton, to you, the saints of God, if you would please join me in a word of prayer. Eyes closed, if you would. Every head bow. Lord God, our Father, Jesus, our Savior, Holy Spirit, our Comforter, we thank you for your grace, your mercy, your ever loving kindness that keeps us and preserves us, that preserves us in trying and difficult times, even in times of bereavement and death and loss, and especially, Lord God, in the loss of a loved one. We ask in this hour, in this season, that you would bless the family of Hershella Horton. That you would bless her children, John and Cheryl. That you would bless their spouses, bless their children. Lord God, siblings, extended family, even constituents, Lord, who mourn her loss, her, her death, God. Even the community at large, Lord God. We say thank you for this time and for this season that she walked the face of this earth, Lord God. What a walking revelation she was of grace and love, compassion, Lord God. Understanding and clarity of the moment, what was needed. Lord, we thank you for such a precious gift. And we ask in this hour that you would comfort the family, Lord God. Give them assurance, Lord God. Even confidence in your word, Lord God. For you said in your word that he had, that has begun a good work in us, will complete it. 
Lord God, may we take confidence in knowing that the work that you began in Herschel Horton has been completed, has been finished. The assignment that was on her life has been completed and finished. And now we come to celebrate a life well lived, God. We ask that you would comfort the family, Lord God. Reassurance, God, that her labor and that her hard work has not been in vain, God, has not been wasted, Lord God. Comfort us and, and the family to reassure them that now she can rest, rest from her labor, from her hard work, oh God. And not only that she can rest from her work and labor, she can receive her just reward from your hand. And so I hear you saying, Lord God, concerning this person, concerning her shallow walker, well done, thy good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a few things. Now come up higher that you may be crowned ruler of much. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. And we ask that supernaturally that you will comfort the hearts of the bereaved of the family. In Jesus' name. And all the saints said together, amen and amen.
Good morning. The Horton and Walker families would like to thank everyone for their support, their love, their prayers during their times of sadness. God bless you all. Resolution. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. 1 Peter 1, 3. I will believe, though all around be darkness. Believe to see the rainbow after rain. Believe that the light will surely follow darkness and frozen earth will yield her flowers again. I must believe he hears my faintest call for Jesus lives and reigns and God is over all. In his own way and for his purpose, God has reached down into his garden to pluck one of his fairest flowers. He called the spirit of our dearly beloved sister, Hershella Horton, home to be with him throughout eternity. Whereas there is no adequate way in which we may express our deep appreciation for her time at Grace Temple and her dedication to ministry, we thank every gracious Lord and Father for her. Whereas we, the pastor, officers, official staff, and members of Grace Temple Missionary Baptist Church desire to express our love and respect for her 
and we'll continue to keep the family in our prayers. And a copy given to this, to the family with our deepest sympathy. Prayers prayerfully submitted, Sister Daisy M. Sanders, Reverend D. Grady Scott, pastor, submitted the 13th day of May, 2022. Resolution. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There should be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying. There should be no more pain, for the former things have passed away. Revelations 21, 4. Whereas, again, a human spirit has taken its flights at the call of the Heavenly Father to the mansion prepared for Sister Hershella Horton from the foundation of the earth by all wise and loving God. Be it resolved, there, therefore, that the Sympathy of Grace Temple Missionary Baptist Church Senior Appreciation Committee be extended to her family. May the Lord continue to watch over you and comfort you, is our prayer. Be it further resolved that a copy of this resolution is given to the family and a copy kept in the Grace Temple Missionary Baptist Church archives. Respectfully submitted, Sister Teresa Collins, Senior Appreciation Committee Chairman, Reverend D. Grady Scott, Pastor, submitted this 13th day of May, 2022. May God bless you all. Good morning to the pastor of this church and other ministers on the roster, to family and friends. Please refer to the inside, left-hand side of your program. Urshela was born on December 15, 1938 in Lawrenceville, Illinois, and moved to Tucson, Arizona in 1965. She continued to remain active in the community and enjoyed spending time with her family. To highlight a wide range of her contributions across Arizona, she began her service to the community in 1974 as a member of the Pima Emergency Medical Services Committee. She served on various committees over the years to include co-founder of Black Woman in Progress, Board of Directors, member for La Frontera, member of the Tucson Civil Service Commission, state director for women in government, member of the Governor's Commission on the Health Status of Women and Families in Arizona, member of Democrats of Greater Tucson, member of League of Women Voters, member of the political action domain of the IMA Community Active our action team and African American Democratic Caucus. She also volunteered at a local elementary school for a couple of years. She worked as a registered nurse beginning in 1960 until 2017. She served in the House of Representatives as a state legislator from 1990 to 2000 and worked as a healing touch practitioner at Canyon Ranch from 1994 to 2017. Hershella received countless awards for her service to include Phenomenal Black Woman of the Year, Lifetime Achievement Award from the Democrats of Greater Tucson, spearheaded the passage of legislation for Dr. Martin Luther King's birthday as a paid holiday for the state. Award of Distinction from Arizona League of Cities and Towns and Distinguished Legislator Award. Hershella was preceded in death by her sister, Cola. She is leaving to cherish her legacy. Her son, John, 
his wife Elisha, and daughter Anisha, her daughter Cheryl, Bruce, her husband, Aaron, son, I'm sorry, Aaron and Daniel, grandsons, sisters Nellie, Tracy, Tony, and Tara, and brother Herschel. She also has three adult grandchildren, Tiffany, Shakila, and Kenya, and four great-grandchildren. Lord, thank you for what we have seen so and done so far. Amen. And I thank for the music. Amen. I didn't realize, amen, how uplifting something like that can be until now. What we do now is we give you an opportunity, if you'd like to, and I always preface this by saying the family can always benefit from comments. You can send them an email. You can call them. You can send them a letter. You can even stop by. But we want to give maybe 10, 15 minutes the most for people if they'd like to share something with all of those of us, us that are here. And we'd ask you if you would use this microphone. That way everybody's not touching the same microphone. So if you would come and you would use this uh, microphone right here, now would be a time for you to come and share whatever uh, you would like to share with those of us that are here. Good afternoon. I was uh, fortunate enough to grow up with John and Cheryl, and uh, it was a very phenomenal time in the 60s and 70s when we were growing up together because it was when uh, extreme parenting was still taking place. When the lights came on, you came in the house. They didn't have to call you. You just came into the house, and, and I was always like, John, why are you going in the house early? No, man, them lights came on. I don't want my mom coming out here. So I said, I understand. And uh, it was inter interesting because the two or three years between me and John and Cheryl are huge back then. Now it's nothing when you're 50 and they're 48, but when you're 10 and they're 7, you know, come on, man, why, why you got your sister out here, man? So it was it was a phenomenal thing, but what I wanted to say is that I've learned so much from Miss Horton because she wasn't a complainer. She went out and she did something about it. You know, if, if something was wrong, she, she'd start a campaign. She ran for office. She did all the things that everybody said they wanted to do in private but never went out and did in public. She, uh, John and myself, we played sports together forever. She has more awards than both of us combined. And I, I thought, you know, I was going through this, I'm like, man, I, I only got three and John has two and she has 60. I was like, hey. So obviously she was setting, setting a uh, uh, precedent for us to follow. And it was, it was, it was really nice. And, and probably the most beautiful thing that I can see now is Cheryl is a phenomenal mother. She raised two sons. And she did an outstanding job. And that was because she had a road map to follow. And I think that that's the, one of the most beautiful things that can come from parenting is when your children follow in your footsteps and become a great parent like you. And, and I just, you know, growing up in the, in, in the 70s, you never, you were taught as a man, don't express your feelings. And, you know, you know how I feel and things like that. But I want to take this time to say, to John, all your whole family, I love you. Cheryl, your whole family, I love you. And I'm very proud. I'm very proud of, of all of you because you guys have really turned out to be fabulous people. And Cheryl, especially you, because I'm telling you, it's very, very tough to be a mom, period. And you did a fantastic job. You had a great example, but you did a fantastic job, and I'm very proud of you. And John? There's a reason why you didn't have a brother and I didn't have a brother because we were going to be brothers forever. So I just want to say thank you uh, to Hershella for the, the road that she showed me of things that could happen because I'm telling you, when you grow up in a single parent household, 
and it's a woman leading that household, you try your best to get around different things because you don't think that she's going to do anything. Well, we found out different because we're in the record book for whoopings. And uh, I think John, one year he was on restriction like 380 days in one year. And we, and we know there's only 365, but he, he got on restriction, you know, a little bit longer. So he didn't have to, he was in before the porch lights came on. So I just wanted to kind of lighten it up a little bit and let you know that I love you guys and you guys did phenomenal. And, and this day is, 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 is very difficult, but we're going to make it through it because we love each other. So thank you. Good afternoon. I wasn't expecting to speak, but at first I'd just like to give honor to God. My name is Yolanda Parker Rizzoli. I am the chairperson of the political action domain of the IMA. And um, I didn't know any of her Shellis children, but she talked about you guys all the time. And I just want to say she was a faithful member of our political action committee. Anything I wanted her to do, she did it, except for being the chair. She was, no, I've been that route, not going there again. But um, we had our a forum, and she was one of the greeters. We have on a forum actually this coming Monday. Anything we wanted of Miss Herschella, she did it for us. She was such a pleasure and just such a beautiful soul, and I was very sad to hear the news about her. She was also a member of the Tucson branch in AACP, very faithful member. If nobody else was on the Zoom, Miss Herschella was on that. Every meeting, she was there no matter what ideas, all over the place, funny, just creative, just a beautiful soul. And just, I just want to say my condolences to the family. Bless you, and we're all praying for you. Thank you. Good afternoon. I think for a lot of us, this is a hard, besides the family, this is a very hard uh, event to attend for many of us. Um, to her family, my condolences. But I'd like to share a few words about Herschella, um, our friend. Uh, we knew about her political things, and I should introduce myself. I'm F.M. Rodriguez. And, um, but Herschella had a wide range of interests. Uh, she had her yoga people. She had her um, Sabino Canyon walkers. You know, she'd come back and she says, oh, I'm going to go to this other group. So she had a wide reach of friends. But especially um, to me and to uh, two other ladies here, Elaine and Linda, there was four of us would meet for lunch. I was the youngin, still working, and work around my schedule. And we're all elected officials. They were retired, and now I have joined them being retired. So we would sit and talk a little bit about politics, but more about women and where we grew up with, and because we were all varieties of, of where we, we, we had our life experiences. But we were win women that bonded together, and that is so special to us. Um, Urshela, I said, Urshela, I said, you know, you need to give yourself credit. You always give other people credit, but you need to really give yourself credit for all the things that you do. She would never ask anything for herself. She would put others first. And we all kind of noticed that. Um, you know, we, we shared, and I go we because it's mainly the, the ladies that we shared with, and she had, no, I know Sharon, you, you were the walker going up Sabino Canyon. You wouldn't catch me going up Sabino Canyon, but that's a different story. Um, and we were just sharing that, but um, we also all had different faiths, um, but we respected one another. We all grew up from different parts of the, of the world. I mean, I should say of the country. But we came together as women and friends. But um, her shell will be missed, but not forgotten. Okay, and that's what's really important. You know, I've lost 
a mother and a father, three sisters, and there are little things that you remember, you know, as time goes on, not at the, at the first, at the day that it happens, but it's little things that you never forget. And they're not major, they're small things in your life that you'll remember how you wish they were there. And I know for her children, the first Mother's Day is challenging. The first Christmas, the first Thanksgiving. And I used to hear these stories with Hershella and Cheryl about the things they would make for their holidays. Because there were different traditions there where I grew up in a Hispanic family. And um, so I said, can you share some of those recipes with me? And, but what's important, you will continue to share those recipes because you'll take them with you. And you'll share that moment. You will have a chair for them that you miss them. But like I said, you'll never forget that they were a part of your life and who made you a better person. And that's what Cheryl did for me, and she did this for everybody in this room. She'll share with you and teach you how to take the great qualities that she brought to this world. And that's what we must all remember. Because at one time, and all of us will come to an end on this earth, but we'll move forward. And you need to take your faith whatever faith you may have, so that you can continue the journey that we have on, on this world that we live now and take it to the next journey wherever we live. So thank you, and remember that as you leave here with these thoughts, with her Shella, what she brought to us, and her great example to this world. Thank you. Take a couple more, and then we want to hear from the family. Good afternoon. Um, I'm Sharon Fultz, and I had the joy of walking Sabino Canyon with Hershella every Sunday for 17 years, and we did a lot of other things over the 30 years, but. Um, our time outdoors together, we did count our steps and logged a lot of miles and talked about everything that was going on in our lives from uh, points in Weight Watchers to what our children and grandchildren were doing and new babies and relationships. And she is just a constant source of joy and strength. And I'm just going to keep pretending but she's there at the end of my text because she's in my heart. <laughs> we would tell each other the stupidest things and talk about the stupidest things, but they weren't stupid to each other. And I think she was like that with many people. She always had an interest in everyone and cared about you. You never left her presence without feeling love and joy. She was such a positive person and so strong. And one of the things that she would repeatedly tell me is, don't shoot on yourself, which I thought was a remarkable phrase, and I love that phrase, and I still tell myself that. Um, so the one thing you don't know about Hershella Horton is that secretly she was becoming a birder. Um, she would call me and say, I have a roadrunner in my yard, or... She would, when she would go to the White Mountains to visit Byron and Effie, and she would text me and say, oh, I'm watching the hummingbirds. There are five hummingbirds at the feeder. And her favorite bird was the phenopepala because I think that was the first bird she, besides a cardinal, that she learned to identify on our walks. So I'm sure she is enjoying herself and walking and loving and appreciating. All these people are here to celebrate her life. Thank you. Well, thank you, Pastor, for the opportunity to share with us. I'll be brief, but just have a few.
few remarks. I'll introduce myself. My name is Bill Sheldon, and I have uh, the occasion, I had the occasions in two instances uh, to interact with Rochella Horton. If I had a word to describe uh, her, I would describe Hershella as being community oriented. In my experience uh, with her, I was an employee of the city of Tucson and the first occasion she served on the Civil Service Commission and I vividly remember how caring she was for the ordinary employee. She would make her arguments uh, very professionally and was very helpful to the, all members of the Civil Service Commission who had the opportunity to serve with her. I also, uh, in my capacity, I was the Director of Intergovernmental Affairs, and to use an unkind but accurate term, that means I was the lobbyist for the City of Tucson, so I had the opportunity to see her in action in, within the state legislature. She was a student of the legislative process and delivered uh, on her promises to the best of her ability. I was very proud of her service to the community and I'll, I will close by saying this. Uh, I know she was a great parent, a great mother, uh, happened to raise a great wide receiver for the University of Arizona. She was very proud of her family. Thank you. Hello, um, my name is Elisa, this is our daughter Anisha, and um, uh, I'm not from America, so if I mispronounce things, then uh, I'm sorry for that, I'm sure Hershella will correct me at one point. Um, Hershella is my mother-in-law, and uh, this title is way too small to describe what she means to me and to my daughter Anisha. You see, many people believe that you only find heroes in movies, in books, and in the Bible. But I know for this not to be true. Some heroes live among us, and Hershella was nothing less than a hero to me. It was more than one heroic act. It was a lifetime of actions that changed and inspired people's lives, and for sure mine. So what made her my hero? She was a hero to me as a mother raising two children in a time this was close to impossible. She refused to give up or give in and ended up not just providing a roof above their heads, but many loving and warm memories of their childhood, which we share every Christmas and we will continue to share with every Christmas. She's a hero to me for showing me how to be a strong and independent woman and she led by example. She did not start out with equal opportunities in life, but she rose to the top thanks to hard work, believing in yourself, and fighting for what is right. She left a legacy and changed so many people's lives, it is even too much to name. She's a hero whose path sometimes was filled with pain and stress, but she found great passion in heal and touch, her way to help others deal with their pain and stress. Helping others, making changes, fighting for what you believe in, this was her DNA. She did not show off, she was modest, she was kind to everybody. She's always chose to listen instead to judge. She always chose to speak instead of turning her head. She was funny, she was stubborn, and she loved her hugs. Dear Hershella, today we are celebrating your life, but we are not saying goodbye. Because your spirit is so strong, it will be in our hearts forever. Your love is in the hearts of John and Cheryl. Your smile 
is in their eyes. When we feel lost or lonely, we will look to the sky and ask ourselves, what would mom do? And I know, like a hero, your guidance will show us the way and we will feel a big spiritual hug. Love has no end and we will see you in heaven. Thank you all for coming. I want to say um, thank you, everybody, for coming. Uh, she was my grandma. I'm sorry, this, this one hurts. I'm sorry. Um, over the years, growing up, she was the first one to hold me and Daniel. Um, the love she showed from, I mean, the time she looked at us was, was uh, so special. And I'm so, so thankful. Sorry, I'll continue to carry her with me for the rest of my life. And thank you. Hello, I would just like to, again, I would like to thank you guys for coming. I was the youngest grandson of Priscilla. And I don't have a lot to say, but I know that my grandma, she would not, she always, since day one, she always demonstrate, she would not ever hesitate to demonstrate her love by showing that to me and my brother. She would always show love, she would always give us hugs, she would always take us places, she'd always, she, there was more, a lot of things I could say, but she was just an overall great person. Even towards her final days, she always just was always charismatic, she always loved us, and, uh, it's pretty painful. This has been a rough time for us, so. I don't know if grandma is listening, but if for some reason she was, what I'd say is just thank you, grandma, for everything. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, thank you all for coming. Um, people knew the public Kershella. She had lots of titles, um, a nurse, member of various committees, healing touch practitioner, sister, daughter, friend to many of you, to me and my brother, she was mom. With all of her activities, starting out when, she was young, when we were younger, we couldn't understand why we got drug out of the house on a Saturday morning so she could go sit in some board meeting when we're like, it's Saturday morning, Mom. We're supposed to watch cartoons. Why do we have to go with you? Remember that? <laughs> um, but in her mind, she wanted to make a difference in the community. And she did. She never hesitated to put us first. I can vividly remember I was working at a store, she was in a civil service commission hearing, and she said, I have to go. We're gonna have to continue this hearing. I have to pick up my brother. I pick up my daughter. I said, no, no, Miss Horton, we need to finish. And she said, no, I need to get my daughter. We'll arrange to go pick up your daughter. She sent the chief of the fire department to come pick me up. <laughs> 
the place I was working at freaked out because here comes the fire chief into the building asking for me. She always put us first. She showed up to every football game, wouldn't watch the game. For those of you who know my mom, she took a bag of crocheting everywhere she went. So I would have to say, Mom, stop crocheting. John's on the field. She would stop, watch him, and she was, is he off the field now? Yes, Mom, he's off the field. <laughs> Back to crocheting. That tradition carried on with my sons. My mom still doesn't know a lick of football, basketball, baseball, soccer, anything. But she was always there to show her love and support. She never hesitated to tell you, to tell me, I love you. I was one of the last. I at least had the opportunity to say, I love you, Mom. And I'm forever grateful for that. <laughs> oh, wow. Um, <laughs> I've played in front of 80, 90,000 people. But my legs are weak right now. I'm not going to lie. Um, I had a time in my life where I was on a self-destruction course. And no matter what I did, she was always there for me. She didn't agree, and she would scold me. But she never turned, my back, turned her back on me. And the things that she taught me when I was young, devious, rebellious, as I was growing up when father left the home. I remember, I remember we were in Montgomery Ward, if anybody remembers that store. My sister was in the basket, sitting in the basket. And my mother said, now John, stay right here. I'm gonna go try on some clothes. And when just as soon as she turned the corner, the little devil started. And I, in my, with my sister in the basket, I took off. Going down the aisles, room, Cheryl screaming, stop, stop, stop. I turned the corner and dumped the cart. And Cheryl's voice, wah! Her shella came out in her underwear and bra. <laughs> Okay, and all my mom had to say to me was, John Michael, and I knew I was in trouble. And she came up to me, and as David said, the capital punishment, she backhanded me, whop, in front of everybody in the store. And I had a little bloody nose, and I'm looking to the people like, help. And when the people approached, she put her finger up and said, I feed them, I clothe them, I take care of them. You don't do nothing. And I thought, that's the end for me. I got no help. <laughs> and this was my mom. She loved me, loved us, but she was firm and she instilled the necessary tools in us that enabled me to pull myself out of the dark of 15, 16 years of self-destruction and let's be honest, embarrassment of my family. I embarrassed my family and I tell you since I've been living in the Netherlands and got my life back on track with my wife and my daughter, I come, came back every year and I cried to my mom, I'm so sorry. I am so, so sorry I embarrassed you and hurt you. And all she would have to say to me, you need to stop this. You got some depression, son. 
that was her response. This seems like depression. Are you getting therapy for this? And I just said, no, this is my therapy. I'm going to mention one other quick thing about Cheryl, what she was talking about. My mom used to come to the games, and it was back in those days, the Jenkins-Horton connection. He was the quarterback. I was the receiver. And like Cheryl said, my mom did not know nothing about football. But she wore this shirt. My son is number 86 in the stadiums. And then we made these shirts, the Jenkins Horton Connection. And Mrs. Jenkins and my mom would wear this in the stadium. And I asked her, I said, do you know that play? And she said, I don't know nothing. I'm not a U of A football fan. I'm a John Horton fan. And I was floored by that. And I want to say something because my mother, rightfully so, worries about me and worried about me because of my past. But I'm going to say here in the house of God, like I told her in December, the tools that she instilled in, in me were the tools that I was able to use to pull myself out of that dark. And I'm saying to you now, Mom, we're going to be okay. You can rest. You can rest. We're going to be okay. And I'm more closer to my sister than I've ever been. And I will continue her legacy of loving everybody. Stop being so angry with myself and everyone around me. And I want to continue her legacy the way she would want it. Doesn't matter what color, creed, religion, financial status, it didn't matter to my mom. And I used to trip on that. But I am going to continue that legacy right there. And you're right, David. The lights went out, man. Or the lights came on and I didn't want to hear John Michael. Because when she would shout John Michael, Cheryl Diane, you knew there was a butt woman, butt whooping coming behind it. <laughs> and I want to thank Aunt Nellie, Aunt Tracy, Shelly, Sherry, Uncle Howard, Aunt Pauletta, everybody here is great. Sharon, it's great to see you all. Um, that's all I have. I mean, I don't mean to end it so abruptly, but that's it. We love you, Mom. Okay. Amen. It's always good to hear from family and friends. They tell stories that we may not know. And I found out something today uh, that uh, did not know, but uh, made me feel more like family because every Sunday after church, no matter how long the line was to get to the pastor, Sister Horton would stand in line and she would come up and say, I need to get my pastor hug. She hugged me every Sunday. Pastor Anderson, don't feel jealous. I know you don't have people that hug you every Sunday, but she would wait. Didn't matter how long the line was. She would say, I've got to get my pastor hug. And I was sharing that with the family. They said, yes, yeah, she always hugged family. So then I felt real special to be part of a family of Sister Hershella Horton. Every now and then, you'll run into one. Every now and then, you'll meet a Hershella Horton. They're rare. You don't see them very often. But every now and then, you'll run into one. I met her. I didn't actually meet her before uh, she became a member of the church, but I knew her before she was a member of the church because back in the mid-'90s, I had a family that had a person that was incarcerated. I don't know if you knew this or not, but they could keep them up to 30 days after they had finished their sentence. And somebody said, well, you need to call somebody. So I, 
I looked through the directory and I found out that my representative was Hershella Horton. And I called her and I said, I know you don't know me, but I have a problem, I have a situation. She said, what is it? And I told her what the situation was. And I said, then we just can't wait 30 days. He's already been released. He was home next week. That's how quickly she worked. She was such a great person. But you know, a lot of people would say, uh, knew her. Before I go any further, how many elected officials are here? Amen. I saw Sister Sandra Kennedy come in in the back, and so I know that there's some others that are here. We don't want to. We don't want to point anybody out. We don't want to run anybody's uh, campaign from the pulpit. I just wanted to recognize each one of you uh, and thank you for the work that you do and in honoring Sister Horton. And I want to say to the family, if somebody says, you're like Hershella, they can't pay you a bigger compliment. They can't pay a bigger compliment than to say that that's what she would have done. So I wanted to share with you a word from the Lord. Pastors do that, especially at memorial services and homegoing celebrations. But I also understand that there are many different faiths in here today. And many people aren't familiar with what Sister Horton had become very familiar with. Sister Horton was a faithful member right back here on this side, probably about three-quarters of the way back. That was her seat. Amen. All right three-quarters of the way back in the middle. That was her seat. That's where she sat. And so I know many people may not know the, Af the, the Baptist African-American tradition, so I'm going to help you. If the preacher says something that's true or something you agree with, don't nod your head. He may not see you. Don't think it in your mind. He can't read it. Don't smile. He may miss it. Say Amen. Y'all need some practice. Let's try that again. If the preacher says something that's true, or if he says something that you resonate or identify with, you say amen. You're getting better. We're going to practice one more time. Everybody just say right, just right now. Amen. amen. All right. And some of y'all didn't say nothing. I'm forgiving. I'm not going to be mad at y'all. Amen. But I'm really saying that because that's what Sister Horton enjoyed. I didn't know her as a legislator, but I certainly knew her as a member of Grace Temple Baptist Church. And she not only would come to church, she'd bring her family to church. That's where I met the family was when she brought them to church. And guess what? She made them wait in line just like everybody else until everybody got through. And then she said, Pastor, I want you to meet my daughter and I want to meet you. I want you to meet my family. And so that was Sister Horton. Amen. And so, guys, I'm saying to you today, we want to celebrate her life. Y'all getting better. We just, if we keep going, we're going to get there. Amen. We came to celebrate her life because she lived a life worth celebrating. Amen. Amen. See, y'all getting this right now. Amen. Everybody cannot have their life celebrated because everybody doesn't live a life worth celebrating. And so today I want to share with you, and, and, and you know, while I'm thinking, what could I say about someone who meant so much to so many? You know, the, 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 this room could not hold all the people whose lives were impacted by Sister Horton. She touched a lot of people, and she touched some people that didn't even know she was touching them. And she left a legacy that uh, a lot of people will be able to, re I, I don't remember how that happened, but I remember so-and-so. She left a legacy. So I want to share this with you because Jesus is telling this story toward the end of his ministry here on the earth. Amen. And I thank Sister Horton for bringing her family here. Let me also say this, that uh, Sister Horton was a faithful Bible student, Bible study student. And when COVID hit, Sister Horton didn't say, well, that's the end of that. She got on Zoom like everybody else. And we had Bible study via Zoom. And something very few people knew 
But even during COVID lockdown, and even though we were not allowed to come into the building, and even though it was not safe for us to enter, she never missed a Sunday. She would watch the service online. Pastor Scott, how do you know she would watch the service online? Because Monday she sent me an email. <laughs> Monday she would send me an email. And, and, and you know what? It wasn't like it was one of those auto things that just write in. She would thank me for the message and tell me something about it that she let you know she was watching what was going on. That was Sister Horton. Amen. And I thank God for her. I really do. I really do. And I remember the first time I met her, and she introduced, she gave me her name, and I thought, the Hilla Short Horton is here at Grace Temple. The Hill. Amen. She meant so much to so many people that I was blessed and honored by just meeting her. Jesus says these words, and again, the kingdom of heaven can be illustrated by the story of a man going on a long trip. He called together his servants and entrusted his money to them while he was gone. He gave five bags of silver to one, two bags of silver to another, and one bag of silver to the last. Dividing it in proportion to their abilities, he then left on his trip. The servant who received the five bags of silver began to invest the money and earn five more. The servant who had two bags of silver also went to work and earned two more. But the servant who received the one bag of silver dug a hole in the ground and hid the master's money. After a long time, the master returned from his trip and called them to give an account of how they had used his money. The servant to whom he had entrusted the five bags of silver came forward with five more and said, Master, you gave me five bags of silver to invest, and I have five more. And the master was full of praise. And here's the message I believe that applies to Sister Horton. Well done, my good and faithful servant. You've been faithful in handling a small amount. So now I'll give you more responsibilities. Let's celebrate together. Sister Horton, well done good and faithful servant. You were faithful over what God gave you, and now he's a reward for you. Y'all missed it. All right, all right. We just, Sister, we're going to keep doing that till they get it, all right? You know, it's different, Apostle Anderson, when I grew up. If you competed in a sport, there were winners and losers. You had first place. You had second place. You had third place. That's it. If you didn't come in first, second, or third, you went home till next year. But today, everybody gets an award. Everybody gets something. They get a participation medal or something that says, I was in this game. I was here. But brothers, the reality is, sisters, everybody doesn't get a well done. Everybody doesn't get a well done. In order to get a well done, you got to do well. Amen. Jesus gives us a glimpse of what's going to happen at the end of the age and how much we've amassed in the money and how many homes we have and how much we have done in gathering earthly things will not matter at all. The only thing that's going to matter is what we did for him and what we did for others. I say this to those who are still in this race we call life. I believe with everything that's in me that Sister Horton heard the Lord say, well done, good and faithful servant. If you want to hear the Lord say, well done, you got to do well while you're here. Did y'all notice that God said, or the word says, that he gave to each one according to their ability. I'm not going to be evaluated on what you got. And you're not going to be evaluated on what I got. I'm going to be evaluated on what I did with what I had. And what you do with what you have 
is between God and you. God gives it own, according to your own ability. I need to share this with you. I promise not to keep y'all too long. And how many of you know that when a preacher says, I promise not to keep y'all too long, that really don't mean nothing? Okay, all right. I didn't know if y'all knew that or not. But when a preacher says, I ain't going to keep you long, amen, uncross your legs because you're going to be there for a minute. All right. But he says, he gives according to their own ability. Uh, one day we were watching the telecast. I was in the kitchen, TV was on in the living room, and, the, and, and I, the telecast was on, and I heard this horrible singing. I mean, it was so bad, I, I, I called out to my wife. I said, who is that? She said, that's you. <laughs> From then on, Amen. Amen. Right From then on, even while we were singing, oh, y'all couldn't hear me. I was singing right along with them, but my microphone was off because singing is not my gift. Amen. All I had to do was listen to a few minutes to realize that's not God's gift to you. You ain't going to make that better. You ain't going to make that grow. That's just not you. Turn your microphone off. Move away from the mic because that's not you. But whatever God gave you as a gift, he gave it to you as an investment. He makes an investment in your life. And it's what you do with that investment that determines whether you hear, okay, come on in. It determines whether you hear, I'm sorry, you can't come in, or whether you hear, well done, good and faithful servant. I want to assure you right now that Sister Horton heard a good, well done. Well, Brother Pastor, how would you say she's heard that word? Well, it, I didn't know her as many years as everybody else, but I did know her long enough to know that she utilized the gifts that God gave her. How do you know she utilized the gift that she gave her? Well, the first gift he gave her was as a caregiver. And she used that gift as a caregiver, as a nurse, and as a healing hands practitioner. I had not heard of healing hands until I met Sister Horton. She was the first one to explain that to me, and she used her gift to help other people. And there's some people whose lives have gone on and they do not know who it was that made that difference in their life, but they are better off today because she was where she was. And so, amen, she utilized the gift that God put into her. And being a caregiver is a special gift from God. Everybody can't be one of those. Some people are not meant to be caregivers, just like I'm not meant to be a singer. Amen. Some folks, you don't want them in your hospital room. Sister Horton was a person who utilized the gift that she had to help other people. I didn't know her as a nurse. In fact, I met her a few years. She had long since retired. Uh, she, did, she was still a healing hands practitioner, but I, I, I did not really see the days where she was a nurse. But I know because of her spirit, she was one who cared for people. Not only did she have the gift of caregiving, but she had the gift of leadership. Let me say this, this way. If Sister Horton was in the committee, it was going to be led. Now, if you didn't know how to lead, she knew how to lead. And if you were going down the wrong path, Amen. You know, a lot of us, we think we really know politics and we think, oh, we got, that's the easiest thing in the world. Amen. And who couldn't do one of these? Who couldn't do that? I've been in meetings with Sister Horton where we were going down this road. I mean, we had it in fifth gear. It was already in overdrive. We were hitting the, the freeway. We were going down I-10 at 75 miles an hour only to hear her say, wait, wait a minute, you can't do that. And put the car in reverse and back up and go in a different direction because we thought we knew what she really knew. She used her gift of leadership. Amen. She was the kind of person that could sit in the room and say, here's the path that you need to pursue. And there are uh, people that are in office today because of the impact that she had on their lives. 
And there are people right now that are serving that owe their office to the education they received from Sister Horton. And I, I found this out. I didn't know this, and I, I was, I'm going to be honest. I wasn't necessarily in agreement at all times, but she even crossed party lines. She didn't care what party you were running for or what position you were running for. She used her information to help other people to move forward. Amen. She helped the elected officials navigate the difficult seas of campaigning. And then she instructed people in how to become elected officials. Those are the kinds of things she used her gift of leadership for. But not only did she have a gift of caregiving and a gift of leadership, she also had a gift of teaching. She had a way of telling you how to do something without making you feel bad. Everybody can't do that. She could correct you and you wouldn't even know you were being corrected. She could set the record straight without you knowing that the record needed to be set straight. There was just something about the way she was able to inform and to teach how to bring things that you couldn't see into, visib- uh, into, into view. But not only was she a teacher, and not only was she a leader, not only was she a caregiver, she had a gift of bringing people together. She had a gift of bringing people that were even on opposite sides. She had a gift of bringing them together. She had a way of making people realize that the problem was bigger than party. She had a way of making people understand that we can do more together than we can by ourselves. She had a way of making people see that God was able to do more through us than we could do by ourselves. So to the family, thank you for sharing her with this community. Tucson and Arizona is a better place because Hershella Horton was working here. So thank you for sharing her with us because we would never have accomplished all that we would have accomplished had it not been for her. Did y'all catch what, the, what, what, what Jesus was using in this illustration? He said, one man had five, and he took the five that he had and made work with the five so that instead of having five, he had ten. He made an investment with the gifts that he was given. Did y'all catch this? He was given the gift. He didn't work for it. He was given the gift, but he utilized the gift to get more. How many classes must we have to help y'all see that I'm saying something that y'all needed to say amen? amen. So, so let's do this one more time. He took what he was given and used it to increase what he had. Amen. Some of y'all are just going to get an F. That's all right. All right. But he took what he was given and made money for his investor. And here's the good news. Sister Horton took what God put in her and blessed us because he put it in her so that she could hear him say, well done. Y'all still ain't catching it. Y'all still ain't catching it. She took what God gave her and changed lives so that we would celebrate her life even with her not right here in the room. Y'all, you're still missing it. So, so, so she took what God gave her and helped some people move up the ladder. She took what God gave her and helped some people get healings. She took what God gave her and made some people's lives totally different. And she was able to celebrate with you like we're celebrating her life right now. Amen, amen. amen. I told y'all, I promised y'all I wasn't going to keep y'all. But here is the last thing I want to share with you. Jesus said to the, in this parable, he said he took five of the five that he gave him. And now he got ten. And he said, 
Well done. Good and faithful servant. And that would be enough to say, all right, y'all, let's go eat. But there's one thing that he left that I'm not going to leave out. He said, and now let's celebrate together. Wait, hold up. Y'all missed it. Y'all missed it. I know some of y'all are lazy, but amen. Listen to what he said. He said simply, well done, good and faithful servant. Now let's celebrate together. Let me tell you something that took place a few days ago. A few days ago, our hearts were broken, and we grieved when Sister Horton went home to be with the Lord. But you should not grieve as those who have no hope because she celebrated what God had put in her. And she heard him say, well done good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over a few things. Come on up higher. I've got some more things for you to do in the kingdom. See, we get this thing confused. We get this thing wrong. We, we, we get this thing sad. We look at death as the end, but simply death is promoting. It's when God says, you've done your job down here. I'm going to promote you to a new position. And he said, we're going to get a chance to celebrate together. Let me close by saying this verse from Paul wrote this to the church at Thessalonica who was feeling bad about those who had died without knowing the Lord. He said, the Lord himself is going to descend from heaven with the voice of an archangel and the trumpet call of God, and the dead in Christ are going to rise first. Then we which are alive and remain will be caught up to meet the Lord in the air, and we'll always be with the Lord. So what do you mean celebrate? There's a celebration getting ready to take place, but it won't be in Tucson. It's going to be in the air. But here's the good news. Sister Horton is going to join in that celebration. The news doesn't get any better than that. Apostle Anderson, Reverend Davis, Phelps, Reverend Wallace, story is told that all the preachers may be here. Old lady, she was just as nice as she could be. Sister Cheryl, she was so sweet. Everybody in the town loved her. Brother John, she lived down below the dam. When she lived below the dam, she, people would go fishing, and they would go by her house, and the old lady always had cookies and red Kool-Aid. Where are my people that didn't grow up with money? I got just a handful of folks that know about re- soda, Coca-Cola. You got Coca-Cola when it was celery. You graduated from high school. You got Coca-Cola. Amen. You hit a grand slam. You got Coca-Cola. But if you wanted something to drink at dinner, it was red Kool-Aid. Amen. I got just a handful of folk that know that. She was just the sweetest old lady, and she would always have Kool-Aid and cookies for everybody that came by when they were going fishing. She was just the sweetest old lady, and everybody loved her. The whole town knew her. Everybody in the town knew her as a sweet old lady that lived below the dam. But one day, the dam broke. Terrible storm arose, the dam broke. And everybody in the town ran to see about the little old lady. And the house was gone. And hearts were broken. And people were crying. And it was the saddest occasion. They couldn't believe this thing was so terrible that she was gone. And just then, while everybody was crying, a real estate agent from town pulled up. And he said, why is everybody crying? And they said, are you blind? Can't you see that the little old lady is gone? That her house was washed away? 
That lady that gave us something to drink and eat every time, just the sweetest woman, she's gone. And the real estate agent said, oh, you can stop crying. Because a few weeks ago, she put a down payment on the house that lived up on the hill. And when the dam broke, she had already moved. She was no longer in danger. Pastor, why are you sharing that story with us? Because Sister Horton put a down payment on the house in glory. And when we thought she was gone, she hadn't left. She just moved. She didn't live in this world of trouble anymore. You got to make sure that when you get to that place where God calls your name, you've made your reservation with the Lord. I share this with everybody, and, 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 then, and then we'll let you go. How many of you know the preacher gets to say that three times? <laughs> but this is true. Reverend Phelps happened in, in Atlanta, Georgia, and I was there at the convention, and I'm standing in line behind this lady. And she goes up and she says, I'd like a room. And the man says, ma'am, do you have a reservation? She said, no, sir, but I need a room. He said, ma'am, there's a convention in town. And all the rooms in Atlanta and the suburbs are taken. I'm sorry. You're not going to find a room in Atlanta or anywhere near Atlanta. Because back then at that time, we used to have about 50,000 people that attended the convention. And I remember standing in line. I... He said, next, she walked away with her head down. He said, next, I went up. I said, I need a room. He said, sir, do you have a reservation? I said, yes, sir. And he said, what is your name? And I gave him my name. I said, Grace, Grady Scott. And he put something in the computer, and he said, from Tucson, Arizona? I said, yes, sir. And he reached under the desk and handed me a card and said, enjoy your stay. The difference between me and that woman was I had a reservation. Don't leave earth without a reservation. Don't leave this room without knowing where you're going. Because as sure as you're sitting here, you're leaving here. Every one of us has an expiration date. We don't know when ours is, but one thing we know, you're not going to stay here forever. Sister Horton, I'm looking forward to the day that I get to see her again. Because guess what? This time I'll be the one standing in line waiting on my hug. <laughs> Thank you, Sister Horton. I am convinced that one day when we see her again, we'll hear that voice that encouraging voice that lets you know you did a good job. Amen. I'm not the greatest preacher, but she always would come up, Sister Cheryl. She'd always come, oh, Pastor, I certainly enjoyed you today. I'm like, I didn't even enjoy me today. How did you enjoy yours? Amen. But that was, the, that was the Sister Horton that I know. Hold those memories precious. Hold them dear. You have a lot to live up to carrying that name and those genes. Make the difference, amen, that she was making in our community. Never let the flag hit the ground. Pick it up and keep running. Sister Horton has passed the baton. She ran her race, and she ran her race well. Last year, she started reaching back, waiting for us to catch up to her. A few days ago, she passed the baton to us, and now it's our job to finish our portion of this race. Finish the race and run well, and at the end of this life, we'll hear him say, well done.
I'm going to ask everyone to stand. I want to remind everyone that we do have a repass. Amen. And if you go through either one of these doors and go straight back, we certainly want to make sure the family gets, uh, gets their food first. We used to serve, but because of COVID, we just set the food and the people can serve themselves. Uh, it's Baptist, so it's chicken. <laughs> Amen. Amen. If you go to a Baptist church, it's chicken. In fact, y'all, if you want to know the name of a chicken place, it's called churches. That's ours. It's not churches chicken, but it is chicken. We love you guys. Thank you so much for letting her be a part of my life. I really did think I was the only one she hugged like that. I really did till today. I didn't know she hugged everybody. Amen. I felt special. I'm like, well, she waited in line to hug me. Now I found out she waited in line to hug everybody. Amen. Thank you for the impact that she made on my life. Thank you for the impact that she made on all those other lives. We love you. We know some of y'all have to travel to get back. We're going to be praying for your safe passage home because we know we want to hear him say, well done. Father, thank you for the life of Sister Hershella Horton. She meant so much to this community. She meant so much to this church. She meant so much to this family. And now, Father, we thank you that we have the blessed hope that when this life is over, we'll see her again. Not because we've been good, but because you are good. Be with this family now. Lord, some people have to travel, came great distances to get here, and now have to travel back. Keep them safe. And then, Lord, surround this family with your love. Let them feel the presence of your spirit that they may know that they belong to you, and you love them. Bless the churches that she touched. Bless the lives that she made better because she was here. We realize, Lord, that for us, life is going on, and we must sustain ourselves with food. We ask your blessings upon this food, that it would be used to sustain us until we no longer need it because we're with you. Watch over these, your people, Lord, is our prayer in Jesus' name. And now the God of peace that brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ to whom be glory forever and forever. Amen and amen. If you'll go through either one of these doors, I know some of you have to go back to work. Thank you for being with us today. Thank you for celebrating with the family. But either one of those doors will take you back to our dining area.